Good evening. Today is November 22nd, 1983. 20 years ago, the unthinkable happened to our country. In the midst of a Cold War, a tragedy so huge occurred we still talk about it today. That is, of course, the assassination of our former president, John F. Kennedy. For today's special, we will be talking about the very document that was formed from the events that happened in Dallas, Texas, November 22nd, 1963. At 12.30 p.m., President John F. Kennedy was in a parade in a convertible limousine in Dallas, Texas. Lee Harvey Oswald was in the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository during this time. With an infantry rifle, Oswald took three shots. The first missed. The second hit both President Kennedy and Governor Connolly. The third was a tragic headshot that killed President Kennedy. These are the basic facts to the public, and even these are sometimes disputed. This is a very complicated document with very complicated elements. Say, for example, Oswald's motives. Many historians still ask what really happened that monumental Friday. Only seven days later, President Johnson establishes the Warren Commission. Johnson handpicked the committee. Earl Warren, he was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court at this time. Alan Dulles, he was the former head of the CIA. Hale Boggs, he was on the House of Representatives. Gerald Ford, he was on the House of Representatives and the future 38th President. Richard Russell, he was a senator. John Cooper, he was also a senator. John McCloy, he was an advisor to the president, a diplomat, and the former president of the World Bank. In September of 1964, the committee released their findings to the public. The Warren Commission report is an 888-page report. Its main conclusion, the report found no evidence that anyone was involved or planning of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. This means that Lee Harvey Oswald was a lone shooter. A lot of events were happening during this time in America. There was great tension with the Soviet Union because of the Cold War. Robert Kennedy was trying to track down the Mafia. There was a failed invasion in Cuba we were leading called the Bay of Pigs invasion. Many Americans were led to believe that with everything going on at this time, it had to be a conspiracy which is a secret plan by a group of people. The Commission shut down these concerns by stating that the Soviet Union and Cuba were not involved with the assassination, nor was the Mafia or even CIA agents, which was another group that was accused. Many critics that debate that one gunman physically is impossible because of the location and quantity of wounds between Kennedy and Connolly, with the bullets still intact today. The gun used as a 6.5 Italian Carcano infantry rifle would have had to been reloaded loaded, and taken time to shoot each shot as well. The Warren Commission suggests that the path of the bullet is plausible, and the positioning of the victims, because of the positioning of the victims and the fact that both men moved at the shots, Kennedy lurches forward and Connolly turns around twice. The second shot, according to the Warren Commission, is known as the single bullet theory while critics mock this and call it the magic bullet theory. As for the timing issue, many tests have been conducted to test just how fast the shots could have been. The test concluded that Oswald could have pulled these three shots in a five to six second span with a seven to eight second time span at max. We have with us some text from the exact document. This is on page three, chapter one. He appeared to stiffen momentarily and lurched slightly forward in his seat. The bullet had entered the base of the back of his neck slightly to the right of the spine. It traveled downward and exited from the front of his neck, causing a nick in the left lower portion of the knot of the president's necktie. Before the shooting started, Governor Connolly had been facing toward the crowd on the right. He started to turn toward the left and suddenly felt a blow on his back. The governor had been hit by a bullet which entered at the extreme right side of his back at a point below his right armpit. The bullet traveled through his chest in a downward and forward direction, exited below his right nipple, passed through his right wrist which had been in his lap, and then caused a wound to his left thigh. The force of the bullet's impact appeared to spin the governor to his right, and Mrs. Connolly pulled him back in her lap. 
Another bullet then struck President Kennedy in the rear portion of the head, causing a massive and fatal wound. This next piece of evidence is found on page 374, chapter 6. Based upon the investigation reviewed in this chapter, the Commission concluded that there is no credible evidence that Lee Harvey Oswald was a part of a conspiracy to assassinate President Kennedy. Examinations of the facts of the assassination itself reveal no indication that Oswald was aided in the planning or execution of his scheme. Review of Oswald's life and activities since 1959, although productive and illuminating the character of Lee Harvey Oswald, did not produce any meaningful evidence of a conspiracy. The Commission discovered no evidence that the Soviet Union or Cuba were involved in the assassination of President Kennedy. What you just saw was the main findings and conclusions of the Warren Commission report. After this was published, people didn't know who to trust, who to believe. The public already knew that the government may not always be super truthful, so why should they believe this, a document that could be covering up the government's own conspiracies? People didn't know if they could trust a single bullet theory, let alone all of the other claims of the document. The consequence of this document was that in the government's eyes, the investigation was delayed arrest. The American public doubted the government more and more over time and established that once again, the government would lie to conceal the truth. It's been 20 years, and we still don't know what really happened that day in Dallas. Whether you believe in the claims of the Warren Commission, or you believe it was a conspiracy, well, that's up to you. This has been Megan Mosier, Channel 2, Dallas CBS News. And we're off. There are lots of other reports with different conclusions. Today's special was just about the Warren Commission report. There are still many theories and many factors about the assassination we don't know. That is why I personally consider this one of America's greatest mysteries. Do we have any questions from the live audience? Why should the American public care about this document? People should care about this report and assassination because it's our own country. The person that the American public had chosen to serve had been taken. I strongly believe that the American history repeats itself. If the government or the mafia or another country was involved with the assassination, who's to say they don't do this again? I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the proximity of the investigation beginning seven days after the actual assassination, um, how important do you think it was that these individuals serve on the actual commission um, committee? They, they obviously were hand-picked. Do you think that there's any particular reason why these individuals were there? I do. I think that uh, President Johnson wanted to get some of like, the top-of-the-line uh, politicians during this time, and he ch obviously chose Earl Warren, even though even Earl and Warren rejected this two or three times, because Earl Warren was you know, the head of deciding what's right and what's wrong, the deciphering the facts. And as for the House of Representatives and the Senators, I think that he chose these because uh, the House of Representatives and the Senators were going to do their own uh, investigation. So instead, they just chose a Republican and a Democrat from each branch, and they did this with the four men. I read um, recently that Earl Warren wanted this the, the final uh, conclusion of the, of the commission to be unanimously supported by all of the members of the commission. He wanted there to be a sense of unanimous uh, finality. Um, and because of that, he often has been criticized for maybe some things maybe being left out of the report or some evidence um, seeming a little shaky that they use in the final report. What do you think about a statement like that, or did you find anything in your research along those lines? You know, I think in 10 months, it's extremely hard to write an 888-page report, page report and to get all of this evidence to back it up. So I think that while they did what they could to get you know everyone to agree and like the, make it seem plausible for the the public whether this really was what they said or what it wasn't, I think that they did what they could in the ten month time span that they had. Do you think it was more important for the report um, to allow the public to get the sense of trust back in the government, um, or do you think it was more important to find the truth? 
I think that what they really wanted was to find the truth. But like I said before, it's 10 months. And with the technology they had in the 60s, they really couldn't do what they wanted to do. That is why there's been multiple experiments and investigations conducted since then. Great comments on the technology. Um, I think there's still some elements of the commission that are still under seal mm -hmm. um, for some set date in the future, um, including autopsy reports and things like that. Do you think the time has come now in 2019 where all parts of this investigation should be open to the public? Or do you think that we should be able to move on with the, the conclusions of the report? Well, I mean, I don't know what time you're talking about because we're in the 80s right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think that, you know, currently if they did open some of that uh, doc like those documents, sealed documents up, that I think that the American public would go kind of crazy if they knew what, like, if the government really was involved or if, you know, they knew that another country was involved. I believe that this could be the beginning of a war or some dramatic event. So, um, who do you think had the most to, to lose from this report? Was it, were the members of the commission or was it the White House? I think that the government itself had the most to lose with this report because as soon as this came out, people didn't really trust these claims and you know they already didn't trust the government and this document just kind of lessened that trust. Any other questions? Thanks for your time today. Thank you.